In May of 2023, Amber Baron was getting the mail outside her home on the southeast side of Indianapolis when she was approached by a man later identified as Damien Boyce. The heavily tattooed criminal brandished a pistol and told the young woman, let me into your house. Baron refused and instead gave him the money she had on her, roughly $100. Boyce then pointed his pistol at the woman and asked her to add him on Facebook. Baron agreed, hoping it would get Boyce to leave, which it did. The delusional man later messaged Baron on the social media platform, telling her you was too pretty to rob, and claiming he'd pay her back. Baron was cautious in rejecting him, writing back that she believed him that he was sweet and that she knew times just get rough. Her reply, however, only emboldened Boyce, who continued writing to her, at one point asking her to come chill. Baron subsequently spoke to a media outlet, claiming that the encounter had left her shaken up and paranoid. The Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department reported that Boyce was subsequently involved in another armed robbery on June the 12th. Following an argument, he shot two people and struck a third victim in the head with a brick. In the altercation's wake, Boyce surrendered to a SWAT team. He was charged with burglary, unlawful possession of a weapon, criminal recklessness, and battery. In addition to the charges he faced following the armed robbery of Baron, Number 6. Tiffany Gomez On July the 2nd of 2023, Dallas native Tiffany Gomez caused chaos aboard flight 1009 from Fort Worth to Orlando and became a viral sensation in the process. The 38-year-old, a successful marketing executive, walked to the front of the stationary aircraft and launched a profanatory laced tirade about someone or something aboard the plane that was not real. That particular moment would become the subject of countless parodies and online memes. Addressing the other passengers, Gomez yelled out, you can sit on this plane and you can die with them or not, I'm not going to. The woman believes we've been in the throes of a mental break ironically claimed that the staff themselves were delusional. She relentlessly stated that the flight wasn't going to make it to Orlando, repeating the claims to responding police officers who'd arrived to escort her off the aircraft and outside the airport. Gomez cursed at the cops in spite of them insisting they were only trying to help her. She FaceTimed her mother at some point to say, you know me, mum, that plane is going down. In a subsequent apology video, Gomez, whom the internet had dubbed Crazy Plane Lady, said that the incident was her very worst moment but offered no further insight into what had triggered her bizarre meltdown. The woman who owned a company called Uppercut Marketing took full responsibility for the outburst and noted that even though she was distressed, she should have controlled her emotions. By mid-August, Gomez amassed over 107,000 followers on Twitter and more than 75,000 on Instagram. The attention that the woman had received in the incident's wake had reportedly resulted in her being harassed as she claimed that people were staking out her $1.6 million Dallas home and going through her mail. In her apology video, Gomez noted the memes have been amusing, the flip side has been cruel, before pledging to use her notoriety to promote positive mental health. Number 5. Ryan Partridge In August of 2023, 37-year-old Ryan Partridge won two settlements, totaling $2.5 million against the Boulder County Jail in Colorado. Throughout 2016, Partridge was in and out of the jail. As stated by the lawsuit, the staff had repeatedly failed in providing a man with proper care while he was in the throes of various psychotic episodes. In spite of being well aware he was a schizophrenia sufferer, Footage from the detainment facility would show staff roughing Partridge up while he was nude and in the midst of a mental health crisis. Around the same time, he smashed his face and head into a toilet and suffered seven broken teeth. In another episode, he jumped head first from a railing on a second floor tier at the jail and landed with his head on a metal table before impacting the cement floor and shattering a vertebra in his back. Roughly six weeks later, Partridge, who had no fixed address at the time, was again in jail following a minor assault on another homeless person. 
While in detention, the man experienced yet another psychotic episode during which he thought the CIA was after him and instructing him to rip his eyes out. In spite of his fragile state, Partridge was placed in solitary confinement. While in the isolated cell, the man reached into his sockets and plucked his eyeballs, which left him permanently blind. It would emerge that staff had ignored a judge's order to get the man urgent psychiatric treatment. In a 2017 interview with CBS, Partridge claimed that he wouldn't have disfigured himself if he hadn't been placed in solitary. Recalling his interaction with prison staff, the man said, I remember them asking if I wanted medication. I didn't know what for, and I didn't trust anyone. The two-part settlement was awarded after it was determined that staff had deliberately disregarded his psychiatric needs and for them having used excessive force in restraining him. Number 4. Jacob Yerkes A man who was characterized as a delusional incel on social media was arrested in the fall of 2022 in Loudoun County, Tennessee for stalking and harassing a female co-worker. Yerkes had gone to the Cracker Barrel where he and the woman worked. The latter tried to flee upon seeing him and Yerkes chased her down the street but no further incidents were reported to have occurred. He spoke to law enforcement in the aftermath and their interaction captured by Yerkes on his phone went viral. Yerkes told officers that he'd tried to play the woman a song for her to decide of her own free will if she wanted to be with him. He then went on to make several more troubling statements. Yerkes told the police that he felt the woman wanted him to chase her. He added that he'd been called and threatened by the victim's father and that he wanted the man's name on record. When asked by an officer, do you not think chasing somebody is crazy? He replied that women like that. There's a little bit of excitement. When the officer refuted his claims, Yerkes went on to list examples of fantasies involving rough intercourse before claiming that the woman he stalked should become an adult film actress. The police told Yerkes to leave the victim alone. Yerkes then spoke into the camera and said that the woman in question was involved in the LGBT community, adding, the cops want to deny me trying to get her to be straight. Yerkes was arrested within days of his interaction with the police when it emerged that he'd been posting videos on various social media platforms, making threats of violence that investigators believed were directed at the woman and her family. Yerkes' clips earned millions of views on social media, causing outrage and prompting many users to condemn his behavior. Number 3. Ashley Arbour In August of 2023, 43-year-old Ashley Arbour got on a Greyhound bus from Atlanta to New York City to see pop icon Taylor Swift, with whom the delusional man claimed he had a relationship. He rang the bell at Swift's Tribeca building until someone opened the door. A resident then asked Arbor what he was doing on the premises and the topic of Swift came up. The resident instructed Arbor to go outside, ring the singer's apartment and wait until someone granted him access. Arbor agreed to do so, but when he exited the building, the NYPD was already waiting for him. He told the authorities that he wanted to be with Swift prior to being arrested on two counts of trespassing. Following his arraignment at Manhattan Criminal Court, Arbor spoke to the New York Post when asked why he liked Swift. The man answered, because she's the most nurturing, like she is me except she is a woman. She is truly the only one that understands me. Arbor went on to say, I know she knows I don't mean any harm. I'd never hit a woman. The Michigan native added that he'd respect the authorities' orders to keep away from the singer's residence and given that he was homeless in New York City, would likely remain in the area to rummage through garbage for food. Today's topic was requested by Metal Melly 4371. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Nicholas Einer Leading up to October of 2022, London man Nicholas Einer had stopped taking his medication for paranoid schizophrenia because he believed it would help him lose weight. The 28-year-old man had twice been admitted to a hospital on account of his mental health condition before he was discharged into the community in 2021. He'd been violent in the past, particularly towards his family, as he'd threatened his mother 
Caroline Adeleo with a knife and struck one of his sisters in the head with a lamp. In mid-October, he stopped taking his pills and later in the month started exhibiting signs of psychosis. He was delusional and spoke about witchcraft and being the king of Africa. He left the family's Dagenham home and went to Paris on October the 28th before returning two days later. On the evening of October the 30th, another of Ina's sisters, 25-year-old Angel Adeleu, was preparing to go out when Ina walked into her room smiling and looking possessed. He told the woman, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. You're a witch. He then proceeded to knife Angel at least seven times, hitting her in the thigh, wrist, arm and chest. 64-year-old Caroline heard Angel's screams and went into the room. She intervened and tried to get Ina off his sister, at which point the man overpowered Caroline and plunged the blade into her chest. Caroline died from her injuries at the scene while Angel recovered. Ina surrendered to law enforcement in Dagenham shortly after the double stabbing and, upon being interviewed, told investigators that his family were out to get him. In the incident's wake, Ina pleaded guilty to the manslaughter of his mother by diminished responsibility and unlawfully wounding his sister. On August the 31st of 2023, a judge ordered that he be held indefinitely in a mental health institution. Have you not yet seen our release on when being brainwashed goes wrong? Then stay tuned after number one. Number one, Gracie Spinks. Gracie Spinks, a part-time model from Derbyshire, England, was last seen alive on the morning of June the 18th of 2021 by her mother. A horse riding enthusiast, the 23-year-old headed out to tend to her horse, which was housed at Blue Lodge Farm in the village of Duck Manton. A little over an hour later, Spinks was found unresponsive in the horse's field. It was initially believed that she'd been struck by the animal before it emerged that she'd been viciously attacked by a man who was spotted running away from the farm. Spinks was pronounced dead at the scene as she'd suffered a forceful blade strike to the neck which had severed an artery and her spine. It was suspected that the killer had used an axe to deliver the blow. The primary suspect in the murder was a man by the name of Michael Sellers, aged 35. At around 11 a.m. that same day, his lifeless body was found in a field about a mile away from the farm. Sellers had been Spinks's supervisor at a warehouse where she'd once worked. After the woman had rejected his advances, he was reported to have started stalking her. Delusional about the prospect of being in a relationship with her, a source with knowledge of the situation reported he was a weirdo and wouldn't leave Gracie alone. The man was even known to randomly turn up at the stables where Spinks was riding. She reported Sellers to the police in February of 2021 and was reported to have obtained a restraining order against him, but the investigation went no further. Weeks before Spinks' murder in early May, Walker, Anna White found a bag stashed in a lane about a hundred yards from the subsequent murder scene. The bag contained an axe, hammer, two large knives, a flick knife, Viagra and a disturbing note which read, Don't lie. White reported the matter to the police and was told they wouldn't be looking into it any further. In hindsight, the decision would be regarded as a critically missed opportunity given that forensic analysis would have likely proven the bag belonged to sellers. Updates from the summer of 2022 indicated that five Derbyshire officers were set to face misconduct proceedings. Two of them for how Spinks' stalking investigation had been handled and three for how they'd acted upon the discovery of what was described in the media as the kill bag. Spinks' parents spoke out and said that she'd been failed by the police, pushing for a legal reform named Gracie's Law, which would see an increase in funding allocated to the investigation of stalking cases. Number 9. Shana and Dominique Decree In February of 2019, 45-year-old Shana Decree and her 19-year-old daughter Dominique murdered five family members, including three underage victims, in Morrisville, Pennsylvania. The two women were allegedly inspired to commit the heinous acts by the black Israelites an extremist group in which they took part via the internet. Shana's ex-husband, who lived in North Carolina at the time of the murders, indicated that he'd been keeping in touch with his children until February the 1st, when his former wife cut all communication between them. Several calls were made to the police by concerned relatives, 
and the search of the home was finally conducted on February the 25th, leading to the discovery of the bodies. Mother and daughter initially pleaded not guilty, but ultimately accepted a deal to avoid the death penalty. During their testimonies in court, Shana and Dominique defended their actions by insinuating that the victims had wanted to die. On September the 28th of 2020, they were both convicted of five counts of first-degree murder, for which they received five consecutive life terms. Number 8. Levi Belfield Documented serial killer Levi Belfield fathered 11 children with five different women before he was ultimately imprisoned for the murders of Marsha McDonnell, Amelia Delagrange, and Millie Dowler. In May of 2022, the 53-year-old applied for a marriage license after getting engaged to a woman whose name hasn't been revealed to the public. Belfield's 40-year-old fiance began sending letters to him in prison, even after he was sentenced to two life terms, stating that she believed he'd changed since committing the killings. Joanna Collings, the mother of two of Belfield's children, claimed that he was abusive throughout their relationship and flatly rejected the notion that he should be allowed to marry his new lover. Collings told the media that her ex-husband was an expert at manipulating and brainwashing women. Belfield threatened Collings for her attempts to undermine his new relationship, but she nevertheless campaigned against the law that allows dangerous criminals to marry while serving their sentences. Number 7. Kendra Torres On October the 30th of 1976, Kendra Torres was kidnapped and abused by Thomas Brown after he lured the 16-year-old and her husband, Julio Torres, into a fatal trap. The couple had decided to take a trip to Mount Hood, Oregon, to celebrate their one-year anniversary. While seeking out a good fishing spot, they stopped to talk to Brown, who suggested they check out an isolated location by the water. The man then fatally shot 21-year-old Julio, as well as the couple's dog, Rusty. Brown, who was 29 at the time, told Torres that he wanted to keep her as his wife. She was subsequently held captive for three days before the man ultimately agreed to let her go. Torres didn't know her way back to the city, however, and managed to convince her captor to help her, promising she'd tell the police that Julio's killing had been an accident. Brown agreed, but made a stop at his lawyer's office before taking the young woman to the sheriff's department. As she'd promised, Torres told detectives that Brown hadn't purposefully shot her husband. She underwent a psychological evaluation after being deemed a suspicious witness by the police. The test revealed that she'd been suffering from Stockholm Syndrome which had caused her to sympathize with her abuser. In 1977, Brown was convicted of first-degree murder and assault and was consequently sentenced to life in prison. Number 6. Carrie Neurauter 19-year-old Carrie Neurauter was manipulated by her father, Lloyd, into helping him cover up the murder of her mother, which occurred at the family's home in Corning, New York on August the 28th of 2017. In an attempt to establish an alibi for himself, Lloyd pretended to travel to California for a job interview on the day of the murder. When the victim's body was found at her apartment, it appeared as though she'd hanged herself, but medical examiners noticed a strange mark on her chin, leading investigators to suspect foul play. Lloyd and his ex-wife had been embroiled in a custody battle for several years, with the latter named Michelle claiming the man had turned her children against her. Detectives became suspicious of Carrie and her father during their subsequent interviews, prompting them to tap the father and daughter's phone conversations. They discovered that Lloyd had forced the teen to choose between him and her mother, threatening to harm himself if she didn't side with him. On January the 24th of 2018, both were charged with murder. Carrie reached a plea deal with prosecutors agreeing to testify against her father. The latter was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of early release, while Carrie was paroled in January of 2020, having pleaded guilty to second-degree manslaughter. Number 5. Michael Adibowale and Michael Adibolajo 22-year-old Michael Adibowale and Michael Adibolajo, aged 29 were reported followers of the extremist Muslim preachers known as Anjum Chowdhury and Sheikh Khalid Yassin. Radicalized by the latter two's teachings, Adibawali and Adibalajo murdered Lee Rigby on May the 22nd of 2013. 
The victim, a British army soldier, was run over by the culprits as he was walking down a London street before being stabbed to death with a cleaver and several knives. The pair loitered at the scene while terrified witnesses contacted the authorities. The men indicated that they'd carried out Rigby's murder as an act of vengeance against the country's armed forces for the killing of Muslims following a prolonged standoff. The police were forced to shoot the suspects after they'd brandished guns and the cleaver. Adibawale and Adibolaja were hospitalized with critical injuries but ultimately managed to make full recoveries. Both suspects identified speeches given by Chowdhury and Khalid Yassin as having been powerful motivating factors in their decision to commit the deadly attack, reportedly planning to kill others prior to their arrests. They also claimed to be shocked that the Muslim community hadn't come out in support of their actions. In the aftermath, on December 19th of 2013, Adibowali and Adibolaja were found guilty and sentenced to spend the remainder of their lives behind bars. Number 4. Laurie Vallow Between September the 8th and 23rd of 2019, Laurie Vallow and Doomsday cult leader Chad Daybell murdered the former's young sons, Ty Lee and JJ, two months after allegedly plotting to gun down her ex-husband, Charles. The then 46-year-old mother divorced Charles, her fourth husband, shortly after threatening to kill him for getting in the way of the apocalypse. The man was fatally shot by Vallow's brother, who claimed self-defense and died before the case ever went to trial. Vallow subsequently moved to Idaho with her children and soon-to-be fifth husband, Daybell. It was around this time that the cultists brainwashed Vallow into believing her sons had become possessed. Following the horrific murders, the woman tried to fabricate a story to explain away her son's sudden disappearance. She claimed that she would be homeschooling them, but actually rented a storage locker to hide their bodies. Concerned family members alerted the police and the couple cleaned out the locker and their home before going into hiding. The children's remains, which had been burned and dismembered, were found buried in a pet cemetery at Daybell's Idaho property in the summer of 2020. Both he and Vallow were charged with murder, as well as conspiracy in connection to her ex-husband's death. Vallow was deemed incompetent on two different occasions before eventually being found fit to stand trial. Her husband reportedly faced the death penalty. Due to numerous delays and postponements, the trial was pushed to early 2023. Number 3. Keith Ranier 62-year-old Keith Ranier, the founder of the multi-level marketing company Nexium, was found guilty of human trafficking, conspiracy, forced labor, fraud, and several other crimes on June the 19th of 2019. Most of Nexium's employees have been unaware of a secret faction within the company known as DOS, a cult-like group under Ranier's complete control. He reportedly used different mind controlling techniques, including an extremely low calorie diet to manipulate people into following his cultish commands. Ranier suggested that limiting food intake would help cult members deal with psychological issues. He also coaxed victims into revealing family secrets and signing over property deeds to further extend his control over the group, all while he reaped significant financial benefits. 25 people issued impact statements during the subsequent criminal trial, although it's suspected that the number of people victimized was actually much higher. Ranier was ultimately sentenced to 120 years in prison. Number 2. Carwin Roberts Gwynedd, Wales resident Carwin Roberts posed as a lawyer, a doctor and a police officer to control his girlfriend from when they began dating in 2018 eventually manipulating her into falsely believing she was pregnant. The 29-year-old man created several fake email accounts, forged employment documents and edited an ultrasound in an attempt to obtain complete control over his partner, whose name wasn't released to the media. As a direct result of Roberts' manipulation, the woman was persuaded to quit her job. The man also accused her of having multiple affairs, claiming a stranger had installed security cameras in their home and that there was footage of at least one of her purported encounters. The police ultimately got involved when the woman's relatives became concerned about her partner's treatment of her. Roberts was arrested on a charge of coercive behavior in an intimate relationship. He pleaded guilty on January the 18th of 2021 and was given a two-year suspended jail sentence. 
Roberts was also ordered to perform 250 hours of community service and was given a lifelong restraining order preventing him from contacting his victim or making posts about her online. Number 1. Helen Joy On February the 1st of 2021, 54-year-old Helen Joy was found dead in her Liso, England apartment with what were described as horrific injuries. Police arrived at the scene after her partner, 45-year-old Kevin Ashton, told his father that Joy was dead. A subsequent autopsy concluded that she died of hypothermia and that the more than 120 external wounds she'd sustained had worsened her condition. The victim's daughter, Casey Highland, immediately told detectives she believed Ashton to have been responsible for her mother's death. Highland claimed that Joy's personality and behavior had changed drastically ever since she'd become romantically involved with the man. The relationship had allegedly caused the victim to begin drinking heavily and isolate herself from the rest of her family. Following a trial at Liverpool Crown Court, however, Ashton was convicted of murder and on November the 12th of 2021, was sentenced to a minimum of 19 years in prison. Thanks for watching. Would you rather go to the moon or visit the wreck of the Titanic? Let us know in the comments section below.